This is the Golden Gate, and by a modern engineering feat, a bridge of the same name. It has been the Pacific Gate for over 150 years to a new land of promise, the Golden Promise of California. Where there is a gateway of this importance, there was bound to be a city, a city of growth, of an echo of the hopes and aspirations of the people who came from all corners of the world through this golden gateway. And a city there is, a city that for decades has been populated by an ever-growing number of people. People who were drawn from every quarter of the earth by the glittering promise of this Golden Gate. The result is San Francisco, a city of people. When San Francisco was still in its infancy, with the people coming in and staying in ever-increasing numbers, the city fathers even then felt the need for areas kept free of homes and businesses open areas and places of growing things where people could go to be free of the pressures of city living, even if for a little while. When 1,000 acres was purchased in 1868 for $800,000, it was a wasteland of dunes between the growing city and the ocean. Most San Franciscans thought it was a crackpot scheme to plant a park in sand dunes. There were some rocky areas and protected valleys, but what could be done against the wind and shifting sand? With an approach that must have been highly imaginative at the time, the Upper Lands Committee decided that the track selected was susceptible of being brought into the greatest variety of beauty and natural scenery, comprising as it does of picturesque hills, charming vales, rocky points, and depressions capable of being changed into sylvan lakes, winding ravines almost completely fitted by nature for roads and paths, and little prairies which only need protection and water to be green lawns the year around. In a Park Commissioner's 1924 report, they say from out of unsightly wastelands, public spirit and a demand from a busy people that had no fitting sanctuary for its idle hours, little by little there grew into splendid existence what has generally been conceded to be the most artistically conceived and in view of the many obstacles that had to be surmounted, the best planted park in the world. Little by little, under the persevering direction of William Hammond Hall and Don McEwen, the first park engineers, the form and shape of Golden Gate Park emerged from the sand dunes of the western city. They laid out the winding drives that served as windbreaks and began the slow, arduous process of planting wild lupines, beach grass, European bent, and then establishing seedlings of cypress, gums, pines, and other trees. In 1887, the park was 19 years old, and the major portion of it was undeveloped. John McLaren was 40 years old when he took over that year as boss gardener, his term for superintendent. He made two stipulations to the Park Commission. One, there would be no keep off the grass signs. The other, you mind the politics and I'll mind the park. Uncle John minded the park right up to his death at 96 years in 1943. What we are about to see as we follow the path of this park, such as the one here on the right, will be in a large part the result of the guiding genius of Uncle John McLaren. <music>